Hey guys, it's Shane here from Tank Hunter Miniatures, and today we have your tank guide to Adeptus Mechanicus. Now the codex just came out recently, which was cool. Um, a lot to go through in that. It's very interesting how they sort of split things up into, of course, the Colts, the Skatari, all that. One thing that, of course, is lacking is their tank roster. Uh, for your, you know, mechanics, your whole mechanic faction, they only have about three tanks, so we'll go through them anyway, because we have to. Now, they have a lot of varied abilities, and there's a lot of stuff you can do with them, so it is more involved than you think. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we got to look at is the main army rule, the Doctrina Imperatis. That's probably how you say it. So at the start of the round, of course, you pick if you're going to be in Protector or Conqueror. Now, normally I'd go straight for Protector because having the heavy ability on all your weapons, considering everything is a base four up to hit, they're not very accurate. They're, they're like Guardsmen, which is surprising, but you know, it is what it is. They're human-esque. So having the ability to hit better is definitely good. But the trouble with Protector is you have to stay in your own deployment zone, of course, to freak the other benefit, basically getting Armor of Contempt. Now that's gonna, not going to win you a lot of games, because they don't actually have a lot of really long range shooting in their tanks. Like, a couple of them have pretty good, but overall, you're going to be wanting moving forward. Because you don't win the game by just sitting in your back line, you've got to go forward. So the Conqueror Imperative is much better because, yeah, you can get in there fast, you can just get up, assault, fire everything, and yeah, you're not going to be penalized for, you know, going all out. And especially because so many ways to get the victory points is, you know, spending a turn when you would be shooting. So being able to have that real fast, get there, still cap an objective or whatever, really helps. So that's a really helpful ability. And of course, yeah, in Increasing the armor penetration against their backfield, they're not going to want to play a defensive game either. They have to come out to you to be protected. So there's a lot of ways you can play into that. So overall, you got some good choice there. I'd say probably Conquer is what you want to be in most of the time. You want to be on the attack, but Protect is definitely good in situations. Like if you, you're holding the middle ground, you've got, you, you know, you, you can sink your feet in and you'll be rewarded for that. So pretty good rules. I like how it is. All right, so now we know how the army plays, let's build a list. So starting off with the HQ slots, we've got three Tech Priest Engines Now they're not gonna do a lot of damage, they're kind of flimsy, but what they do have is, of course, Lone Operative when next to the vehicle, so you can have them running in around with the, uh, your Dune Crawlers, because they'll be able to keep pace with them and always keep the Lone Operative, and giving the the tank, the 5-up feel no pain, that's really good. But overall, this is a good unit, it's cheap as well. So you can pay your tax, your character, your warlord tax, uh, spamming these guys. You know, they're gonna repair, they're gonna buff the vehicles. It's, it's a pretty good model. So next up, we need some transports for those guys. So we got three Dune Riders. It's very hesitant on this guy to start off with. I never really liked his design. You know, it just seems silly to have it open top when it doesn't need to be but you know it, it's grown on me <laughs> so what does this guy have well he has a lot of heavy stubber shots like a huge amount this guy's a walking hurricane bolter so pretty good at taking out just light infantry he's uh you know he's not going to win you the game but he might actually because what you can do is just after you've unloaded the tech brace you can just move him onto the board have him cap you know corners deploy stuff you know, they're going to be running around the battlefield doing all your fiddly stuff to win the game. So, don't worry about what their sort of abilities are. Their main focus here is they're fast, they're pretty tough, they got a good armor save, and you can just use them for a lot of things. Oh, and they're cheap. These guys are really cheap, so overall a good thing to have to just body block things and get your tech priests where they need to be. So, having three of these guys is a pretty good option. All right, so let's have a look at one of the most identifiable ad mech creations, the Dune Crawler. Uh, so this fun skitter guy, uh, he hits really hard now. Uh, he had trouble hitting for a long time. You know, when he first came out, he was so hard to kill, but now he's, he's back in a good place. So uh, great toughness, great save, two up save, four up invuln. That is so good. Uh, 11 wounds, yeah, that's about standard. And the fact, yeah, he can still smoke. 
yeah, he's he's gonna be hard to take down. Uh, he's slow with only eight inch movement, but you know, you can forgive him for that. So the main thing to look at here is the weapon loadout. So let's go through from worst to best what you should be bringing. So the worst I'd say is the Twin Onager Heavy Phosphor Blaster. Now it's only four shots, it ignores covers and twin linked. So, you know, if it wounds, it's able to, you know, it should be able to get through all right. But it's only strength six, it's only AP one, two damage. What was this supposed to hurt? And especially because its base is hitting on fours. So it's gonna be hitting twos on average, uh, two sh hits on average. You know, you might kill one Space Marine. Might, so it's a very big loss of this guy. I'm not sure what exactly this was supposed to do. Maybe it was supposed to be a lot cheaper, but yeah, since they got rid of prices, it doesn't really make sense, this guy. So next you've got the Daedalus and the Icarus Array. Um, it's all right. The Icarus Array especially, with its twin link to anti-fly four up, it's gonna do damage to a lot of flying things. Really good range. The missile launcher though, you know, only being one shot, which hits on a four. Like it's gonna wound, but it's not gonna, only D6 plus one damage. It's not really gonna put a definite wound into something that's flying. So, like I said, it's good abilities. It's just so rare you'd need something specifically anti-fly. So I feel in a lot of times it would just be wasted. All right, so then we're looking at the neuron laser. No, neutron laser. Yeah, that's the same thing. Anyway, um, this thing's a weird gun because it's of course it's a big you know a couple shot las cannon you know it's more powerful than las cannon it has blast for some reason i'm not sure why you'd be targeting a big squad when it only has two shots and yeah maybe it was a squad of no i can't really think of anything that's like a big five person squad that's got like four wounds a piece and is heavily armored uh i Yes, Terminators. Yeah, it might take out some Terminators. Yeah, I guess that's good. But yeah, that's so rare you'd need something specifically for that. And yeah, it's gonna take out most armor pretty good. Like it's gonna be anti-tank and whatever, but it's just odd how it's... But I guess that does give variety. So it's okay, but yeah, it's, it's not really a specialized weapon. It's trying to do too many things, so it should just try and stay being a big anti-large gun. So yeah, the best gun for you to use on this guy, the Eradication Beamer. Now this guy is super viable in its targets because it's got the it's got the blast as well. It's got the sustained hits as well, D6 shots. Like this is what you'd use to take out Terminators. You know, you come in close, like 18 inches. Now you've got the AP3, three damage a piece. Like this is getting through so much. Like it, it's great against lighter infantry, heavier infantry, and lighter vehicles. So yeah, I'd say the Eradication Beamer as a whole, that, ju that just wins it. It's just got the best of all worlds, and yeah, it's really gonna do its job. So I'd say go the Eradication Beamer, your best choice for your Doom Crawler. And the last of the Admet tanks, we're looking at the Disintegrator, the Scorpius Disintegrator. Now this guy is fantastic. This is a brilliant tank, two up armor, Toughness 10, 12 wounds, this is crazy good. <laughs> Each of its weapons is so specialized at taking out specific targets really well. The energy cannon is one of the best like horde killers around. Because you got the blast, 2d6, indirect. Strength 7, that's gonna take out, you know, that's gonna be wounding. Just regular toughness 3 stuff on 2s, even heavier stuff like marines. Most marines is wounding on 3s. AP2, so that's, you still get the AP1. So unless something's really heavy in cover, you know, it's gonna be hard to get out. There's ways to counter that. But overall, that is a really good infantry killer. Yeah, especially if you're in the Conqueror Doctrine, because then you've got an extra AP, so you can just run in there fast, clear out their back line of the troops, and you're at AP three. I mean, ugh. <laughs> that hurts, that's gonna, that's gonna clear out most things. Uh, but the, now as good as the energy cannon is, probably the Ferromite cannon is the best choice for this guy. So it's a three shot LAS cannon. Ah, oh, that's good. And yeah, getting the plus one to hit against monsters and vehicles. So it's hitting on threes against, um, yeah, these large targets, which of course it should be hitting on. So yeah, this guy moves up fast, 10 inches. That's pretty standard for a tank. And yeah, 
does about as good as, uh, like, better than Predator. As then it has its missile launches with its twin-linked crack missiles. Like, this thing's gonna take out other tanks. This is such a good anti-tank tank. <laughs> it's one of the best. So I'd say, as good as the energy cannon is, take this guy with the ferromite cannon. Make it a dedicated anti-armor, anti-large tank. And that'll really fulfill this guy's purpose. Now, what's to take in mind, though, it can't actually get the benefit of being heavy because you can't stack the plus one to hit roll. So you may as well keep this guy always in Conqueror Doctrine as it's always, yeah, keep it going fast. Keep this guy moving. It's not going to be able to take a benefit from just standing still. Just something to keep in mind. So now seeing as we've run out of tank options, uh, the best thing to do here is ally in an Armaga Helvern. So this thing's close enough to a tank because, I mean, it has legs. It doesn't exactly have arms. It has cannons for arms. So that's, it still counts as a tank. It's close enough. <laughs> Uh, so this guy's a really good fit for your Admech armies. I mean, they've always had that relationship together. It's a shame they don't have sort of a special rule for allying night houses with the Admech like they used to, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, the Helverin's a really good choice, though, as you just want to keep this guy in your backfield. You know, it's going to have its long-range cannons. It's going to fight things down, keep it still, so it has the anti-flyer as well. You know, this is a fun guy. It's a good defensible option for your Admech army. All right, so now that we've got a list, let's look at which detachment we should be going with. So we'll start with the Rad Zone Corps. So the Rad Bombardment's a pretty standard one. This is what came originally with the start of the Admech army. So the ability to do just a lot of mortal wounds, start off the game, that's pretty good. Or at worst, yeah, dealing the Battle Shock. I mean, that's always good, stopping them from using their strats and everything. So yeah, there's a lot of fun things you can do there. Like, this is a this is a detachment rule that'll work with most army lists and play styles. The one thing I will say it sort of hurts is your... If you're going with the Conqueror Doctrine, because it encourages the players to leave their deployment zone. So you can't really get that extra AP, but, you know, not everyone's going to be able to lose the deployment zone. So that's just something to keep in mind. Also, that being said, the enhancements, nothing's really going to be good here to help you... Help your tech priests here. Considering we're just using the uh, the smallest ones, they're not going to be leading anyone, so we can just forget the enhancements. As for the stratagems, uh, in this case, the baleful halo, the two CP to give uh, one of your tech priests, neg one to be wounded. Yeah, no, that's that's terrible value. Don't even think about it. The extinction order one is pretty good, not for the mortal wounds, you know, four up mortal wounds, not that great. But the battle shock test, you know, that can really help you out winning a game if if they lose the objective control. That's that's important, so that can be really good. Same with the aggressor imperiative, having one of your tanks, and that's the other thing you gotta remember: every tank is Skatari here, so we can use all those Skatari stratagems. So yeah, having it auto move six. Like, if you really need to get to an objective and you know you gotta roll a six to get there, it, it just helps you here. Uh, the pre-cal purge, yeah, that's a good one. Re-rolling in their deployment zone, and like I said, when you're only hitting on fours most of the time, having that re-roll to hit really effective. That's really, really helps. Uh, lethal dosage, give something lethal hits, yeah, that's always good. That's always value. You can always find a use for that. And the bulwark in imperative. So this is basically giving one of your disintegrators or doing right is a four up involve for two CP. Like it is good having the four up involve. That's definitely a good involve save. Uh, the trouble is, especially for the Scorpius, it already has a two up armor. It's going to be able to hide and cover pretty good. So really, is it going to need the four up involve? Because yeah, with cover, you know, a Laz cannon, you know, you're going from two up save to a four up save anyway. So it's rare you'd need it, but. You know, it's good to have, just in case. So overall, it's not a bad choice to go the Rad Corpse. It's sort of like a auto play mode, because you don't have to put too much think in it. The main detachment rules is going to do the damage. It's going to set the pace of the game without you having to do much. So you can play to that, and you don't have to overly think too much. So it's not a bad choice. I just wouldn't say it's the most interesting play style. All right, so now we're looking at this Katari Eye Hunter Cohort. Stealth Optimization. Now, as I just said, the tanks are all Skitarii, but none of the tanks can make use of the Stealth Optimization rule, which is probably good. It would be pretty broken. <laughs> all your tanks have Stealth outside 12. That 
yeah, that would hurt. So definitely not really designed for a tank play. And again, none of the enhancements can be used on your tech priest. So we'll skip past them. So let's look at the strats. So we got bionic endurance. That can't be used at all, so never mind. The bineric offense. This one's pretty good. It's two CP, but then two units are gonna have the better AP against one big target. That can be really good if you're trying to take down a knight, another big tank or something, and you've got like two other guys that, yeah, you really need them to sort of take it out this turn. So that can be really good to snipe something out, something big. The Expedite Purge, yeah, that's all right. Um, I wouldn't really recommend charging for most of your tanks. But then again, you know, tank shock can be really good in a, in a pinch. And again, it could be the case of you need to steal someone's objective. So if you can advance and charge and steal that objective, regardless of what the combat result is, that can be game changing. So it's always good to have something like that. So the isolate and destroy can't be used here. Shroud protocols can't be used here. And same with program withdrawal cannot be used. So you've only got those three strats you can really use, which like I said, they're not bad. There's just a lot better options you can be playing. So basically to make this one work, you have to be super aggressive. You're gonna have to really think about where you're putting your choices and what you're attacking and where you're putting your focus. So overall, I wouldn't really recommend this. This is a pretty challenging sort of list to take this build with. Now the Data Psalm Conclave, yeah, we can just forget all about this. This only helps the weird cult weirdos and all the big abominations of nature <laughs> yeah we can just forget about him there's literally nothing here yeah no strats no the enhancements i guess you could use but the, they're only good if you're leading something yeah no it's it's not good at all now the exploratory maniple that's a pretty interesting one similar to like the necron power fields one depending on which objectives you control depending on which objectives you're marking you know you get the reroll to wound fighting from that objective or fighting to that objective so it's a really neat ways to plan out how you're going to be fighting the battle now re-rolling to hit would be better than re-rolling to wound but we're not going to look over that <laughs> now the only real enhancement you can use here is the magos one to get the extra cp which is always good you know never going to be bad getting more cp as for the stratagems the cache to acquisition that's a really useful one because yeah you've got like one guy that's going to be standing on objective most times you're just going to be having that one unit so having that unit go down and losing the objective control that can be pretty pretty game changing but if you can keep control of it you know for that little bit longer that can make the difference so that's a pretty good one the priority reclamation it's a lot less useful but you know, it can help. It can help if you're moving always towards the objective markers because that's where you want to be in this sort of game. You want to be always moving towards them and getting those important markers. Now, the Info Slave, that's a really good one. That's a really good buff. Let's you count one of the other ones, one of the other objective markers as the acquisition marker. So that's a, that's a good thing. You could move around that. You could get a lot of guys around that and then you could all get the benefit. So that's a good one. The auto ocular retrieval, not good at all in this army because it'll only affect the tech priest. And yeah, giving him the, the better wound roll with his one damage pistol, that's, that's no, not for two CP. That's, that's for a different army. The incest exhaust, you might think might be interesting, uh, but no, because it'll only affect the tech priest and he already has lone operative, so he doesn't need stealth and cover. <laughs> and the reactive safeguard, so, if the tech priest is charged, you can quickly get him back onto the transport. Um, it's clutch. It's it's very rare you'd need that guy alive. But, you know, if they've got a mission where they've got to, you know, charge in and kill him. If, you know, they're trying to slay the warlord or whatever. And you got to get him back in quick. You know, that could, that could help it. It's, like I said, it's rare. It's expensive. But you might need it. Uh, so overall, I'd say this is not as powerful as the rad zone. But there's a lot of fun you can do. You can really try and outmaneuver. This is much more of a thinking way of playing the game. So, and that can definitely pay off in a lot of situations. Now, the Cohort Cybernetica. This is probably the best one to play if you want to go very tank heavy. Despite the fact that the Legio Cybernetica, that whole rule doesn't really affect your tanks because they already had the Doctrina ability. They didn't go without it. It's, it's weird. Cybernetica didn't get it. Like, they did it specifically so you'd have to take this detachment. It's weird. 
but I don't write the rules, so I don't know what exactly they're thinking. Uh, but overall, yeah, this is what you should be playing for tank heavy lists. Now for the enhancements, you know, your nano mechanic, you know, being able to ignore a, a damage coming into a vehicle, that's good, that's always a good choice. Lord of the Machines is an interesting one, like that's definitely a fun ability, but your engineer shouldn't come within 12 of most other vehicles, you should really be avoiding that. But you know, sometimes you can't help it, but you shouldn't be relying on trying to get him that close just to take advantage of this. So I'd be hesitant taking that one. Now the emotionless clarity one, that is so good. Like the ability to just tell things to auto explode, you know, dealing that many mortal wounds, that is so worth. You can just now fire boat in your cheaper tanks. Just send them in to die to explode. Oh, that's, that's fun. <laughs> And the Arc Negator, we can ignore that one. You know, giving him an anti-four up, anti-vehicle four up on his one damage weapon, we can we can just ignore that. Uh, so fun things you can do with the tech priests here. You can either take multiple of them and maybe take one less transport. You could work it out. Uh, but overall, I'd say the emotionless clarity would be the best way to put in this list, making it even 1500. Call it a day. So looking at the strats, you know, the motive imperative to. Yeah, make one of your tanks even faster. Like I said, with the Disintegrator being sort of a slow one, giving that the plus three movement, and the plus one to do advance as well. The, yeah, making that guy a speedy boy, that's gonna really help. Get him in a good spot. The Auto Divinatory Targeting, oh, that's so good. Gives it the base ballistic skill three up. That means most of your Disintegrators are now gonna be able to hit on twos against their specific target. Especially for the ignoring cover as well. So you're shooting out of line of sight with the, the energy cannon and you're hitting on threes, ignoring cover. If it's in the deployment zone, it's AP3 now. So yeah, you can you can really do some fun things. I, I believe this one's specifically just for the uh, disintegrators. But then again, you could use this on any of the tanks and it'll, it'll always be good. This is a great strat. Uh, the Machine Spirit Resurgence, you know, again, this is something that just helps shooting and when you got a four up to hit that's really helpful because yeah you can you can just take a little bit of damage it doesn't say you have to be fully hurt and you can take advantage of this strat so giving the rerolls to hit again very value on this army uh machine superiority falling back and shooting and ignoring the modifiers even yeah that's that's really helpful and the other thing is you could take advantage of that even if it's not falling back you can just Use it to ignore modifiers, and now you've got this guy shooting the energy cannon out of line of sight, and it's ignoring the neg one to hit. So you can now be, yeah, if you use the other strats, you can be hidden on twos out of line of sight <laughs> and ignoring cover. So, again, some fun combos you can do with this stuff. The transcendent cognitation, I mean, that's good. Say you've got, you're trying to move up all stuff, but one of your guys is already sitting on a good spot, you want to give him heavy. Now you can, so it's a good way to get the best of both worlds without having to sacrifice a lot just to get that little gain you wanted. And lastly, the benevolence of the Omnisire. Giving your tank a six up feel no pain, five up against mortal wounds. You know, it's good, it's survivable. It really helps. You know, it's not a lot, but it can make a difference. So yeah, going through this, the main rule itself doesn't really help the tanks, but you've got so many good stratagems. This is the best stratagems for vehicles ones in the whole codex. And so a lot of good enhancements, so. And you're still getting the benefit of the, the Doctrina regardless, so I'd say this is this is pretty good. This is what you want to be bringing for your tank armies. All right, so quick ranking of what's going to be the, the worst to the best detachment you can bring. So Data Psalm, worst. Don't even think about it. Uh, Skatari, yeah, then second worst. You know, it just really doesn't help them at all. Uh, then we go Explorator. Fun stuff, you know, but you really got to make it work. You got really got to try, really got to keep things in mind. Uh, then you got Rad Zone. That's always good. You know, it's already set in ways how you're going to win that game. And then best, Cohort Cybernetica. Just overwhelming positive buffs. Really bringing what the tanks need to get the job done. So, yeah, just everything to keep in mind. If you want to be bringing nothing but tanks, if you're going to be bringing tanks to sort of buff up your frontline guys depending which way you want to play you know this is what's really going to help if you want to focus in that way but yeah that's the end of this video uh let me know what you think uh how you thought the mechanicus codex was just your whole feelings of it and you know what you're hoping to get out of the year because uh 
it is now 2014, uh, 2014, it's 2024, crazy, I hope everyone had a good New Year's, hope everyone had a good time, and yeah, I just want to also say we hit 500 subscribers, and that's crazy, uh, I want to thank everyone who helped us, and yeah, I'll try and have a lot more videos out this year, you know, really push, trying to get to a thousand, hopefully we can get that this year, uh, but yeah, that's the end of this one, so I'll talk to you guys soon, see ya!